So uh, our next talk in this uh, session is by Shujit Bhattacharchi, who is a faculty in uh, IIIT Allahabad, uh, working largely in black hole physics. And today he'll be speaking on uh, black holes with super translation memories. So Shujit, over to you. We can't hear you, Shujit. Yes, uh, thanks, Dawood. Ah. And uh, uh, is the um, screen is visible? Yes, it is visible. Okay. And I'm can you can you make it full screen, Srija? Ah, sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, it's fine, Srija. Okay. okay. Thanks. Uh, first of all, let me thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, reputable meeting. So, what I am going to talk about that can be very well be summarized by the following slide. So the context in which I will be talking today uh, is very well summarized in this diagram, which is very known to probably many of you. Uh, this is the infrared triangle put forward by Strominger and his collaborators. And uh, in this infrared triangle, there are three corners. So in one corner, this the asymptotic symmetry is there. The asymptotic symmetry of uh, asymptotically flat space times uh, are discussed and uh, were actually developed uh, many years ago. And uh, the it, it was found that there are super translations uh, like symmetries at the very far region from any gravitating source. And the, in the other corner, there is this soft theorems that was actually proposed by Lowe and Weinberg long ago, almost 60 years ago. This talks about uh, quantum field theory scattering amplitudes. So if you have multi-particle collision or scattering, and uh, if you have a massless particle in the external leg, there are some universal features of the scattering amplitude that one can get when you let the energy of the uh, one of the sort particles or one of, one of the massless particles to lead to uh, zero or in the infrared limit. So what has been achieved very recently is that this universal factor or sort factors uh, or this wine, wine soft theorems, they are related to these asymptotic symmetries in the sense that the asymptotic symmetries are the exact symmetries, the scattering amplitudes, this kind of, of in, the, this, in this kind of uh, scattering phenomena. And the word identity with respect to the asymptotic symmetries are equivalent to the soft theorem that can be uh, written down for this kind of phenomena. Now there is the another corner of this triangle is the memory effect, which is purely again classical effect, which tells us that if you are at the far region from any gravitating body, and uh, uh, let us suppose that there are some detectors placed near the infinities, when, uh, uh, when some gravitational wave carrying memory pass through that uh, particular configuration, there will be permanent shift to the relative position of the detectors. So this permanent shift can be measured. So this can also be uh, related to this scattering phenomenon in the sense that if you are having massive bodies which are scattering in general relativity, so those violent scattering phenomena like some neutron stars or massive black holes are scattering, they can produce some gravitational waves carrying memory, which when uh, pass through this detector stationed the very far region, will induce some permanent shift. And this, the expression that actually uh, determines this permanent shift is very much similar to the soft factor that, that has been realized from quite disparate 
uh, study. In fact, they are related to this expression and this uh, statement about soft theorem are related by a Fourier transform. So in this talk, uh, basically I will not talk about this particular corner. My talk will be uh, based on these two corners, basically relation between memory effect and asymptotic symmetry. So in this corner, there is a uh, connection, like I have written vacuum transition. So basically this means that when in the asymptotic data, one of the asymptotic symmetry like super transmissions act, it actually translates from one vacuum, uh, the configuration from one vacuum to another vacuum. And this translation between two vacuum and this permanent shift are interrelated. So my talk will be based on this particular aspects of this one, uh, infrared triangle. For more about soft theorem, I would like to request the participants to listen to Alok Lanta's talk tomorrow in this meeting. Okay, so uh, as I have already alluded, so in this talk, I will be reviewing how the asymptotic symmetries and memory effect are related in asymptotic linear space time. Then I will uh, describe how these asymptotic symmetries and the related memory effect can be realized near the horizon of a black hole. And next, I will briefly describe the detection of a super translated black hole via standard GR test. And ultimately, I will conclude. So as uh, probably all of you know that symmetries uh, in general space time can be obtained by solving the Killing's equation. So this Killing equation, uh, when solved for, let's say, Minkowski metric, that uh, gives rise this kind of generators, this set of translations, and this particular generators are indicating the rotation and boost. So on, in total, there are 10 generators one can find in the Minkowski space, as we all know. And the groove structure of uh, this Minkowski space becomes a semi direct product between translations and the Lorentz group. Now, uh, when the space time is not flat or Minkowski, then it is very difficult to find the killing vectors uh, and solve the killing equation also. So, for example, for Schwarzschild space time, we get these two killing vectors generating time translations and rotations. And also one can see that at the far, very far region, that means that R tend to infinity region, this metric actually becomes uh, flat or it, uh, it becomes identical to a Minkowski space time. So there is a possibility then that in the very far region, if we are only focusing on the far region metric or far region structure, the symmetries will get enhanced because in that case, all uh, we would have, we we would realize that the symmetry will be uh, uh, of, will be of the Minkowski space-time symmetries, the where ten symmetries are there. But there is a catch because in a general space-time, you can uh, uh, I mean approach the infinities in various ways. So uh, depending and also you also impose some follow-up conditions. You can also impose the follow-up conditions on the metric in the sense that, let us suppose that we have a large R expansion of a metric like this. And then what is a, what that larger expansion uh, of that metric will do that that will change the exact uh, R tend to infinite limit of the metric, which reduces this metric to Minkowski, but there will be one over R corrections to those metrics. So this particular particular type of analysis was done with long ago by Bondi, Van der Poel, Marzner, and Sachs. And they sort of, uh, what they did, so they uh, approached the future null infinity of asymptotically flat spaces along the null directions. And what they could achieve, so the generic, form of asymptotically flat space time near this region. Okay, so when they do they did that, uh, to their surprise, they got 
uh, a, a much more enhanced symmetry group, not the usual Poincare group of um, Minkowski space time. And those, uh, uh, and not only that, I mean, the enhanced symmetry is infinite dimensional. That symmetry group is known as the BMS group. And one of the symmetries that uh, was realized is this super translations. And uh, this in at the null infinity, the, the group structure becomes now the super translation semi direct with the low range group. So let me uh, briefly describe uh, the asymptotic metric near the null infinity of asymptotic flat space time. So this is the bondy in the body coordinate, the full metric. The first uh, line of this metric is just the Minkowski space in outgoing null coordinates. This z, z bar are complex coordinates. These are related to the angular coordinates. This m is the bondy mass aspect. So when there is no, uh, I mean, mass or energy, there is uh, this, the, the contribution of this term will not be there. This C Z Z is something very similar to what uh, we know in electromagnetism, this uh, vector potential. Okay, so the derivative of this is equivalent to derivative of C Z Z. And uh, if you set C Z Z, etc. zero, then you basically, and also as well as this to be zero, then you get, you can get back to this Minkowski metric. But these are the corrections term, correction terms. And uh, this NZ is related to the angular momentum aspect, which I will not talk about today. And these are the fall off conditions under which this metric can be written. And these are the transformations, asymptotic uh, transformations that preserve this structure. So from this transformation, one can easily write down the generator which is known as the super translation in this way. So one can just focus on this first, first term of this generator. Uh, this first term, if had it been a constant, it would have just generated a rigid translation. But uh, this uh, particular factor here is uh, not a constant. It is, it is a function of Z and Z bar coordinate, or in other words, the angular coordinates. So therefore, these translations are not rigid translations. This is, these are angle dependent translations and therefore that is called super translations. And these super translations also form an infinite abelian subgroup of the whole PMS group. So to understand what the super translation do, this, uh, let me just show this figure. This was inspired by uh, Strominger's lectures. So what this super transition do that they shift this retarded time at each angle in the celestial sphere. So these very little tiny arrows are uh, translations of different amount at the infinities of this retarded time. Let me briefly also tell that there are other kinds of symmetries that one can also realize at the far region, these are known as super rotations. And these act as local diffeomorphisms of uh, celestial sphere and null infinities. And in the presence of this kind of super rotations, the extended BMS group can be written as the semi-direct product of super translations and the local conformal transformations of celestial sphere. So now let me talk about the consequences of super transitions. And uh, I must admit that, I mean, I can only talk about a few of those. There are many consequences. So first of all, uh, this uh, super translations actually act non-trivially on physical data. And it translates uh, one asymptotic vacuum to another asymptotic vacuum. So it basically changes one vacuum to another vacuum. What does that mean? I mean, let us suppose that initially 
your space time had c z z equal to 0 then if you add super translation that may generate a non zero c z z although both the spaces are asymptotically flat space okay secondly uh, this super translations will generate memory effect and clock desynchronization effect that i will describe in detail uh, in detail why next the super translation charges there will be charges of the symmetry so they they will be conserved and there will be conservation for every possible f because it's angle dependent translations are there so if you can write uh, the charges in the past of this future time like uh, sorry null infinity and uh, future of uh, past null infinity and they, they this kind of a conservation uh, equation can be written but in the presence of a black hole the, there will be a little change of this conservation because of the presence of an another null boundary this future horizon and the conservation equation gets modified now with these observations uh, recently hawking perry and strominger also proposed that the super translation due to the presence of this infinite number of charges some mechanism may actually establish exact correlation between rd and late time hawking quanta and that may uh, provide some resolution of information loss puzzle although i am not going to talk about this so let me now come to the other corner of the triangle which is memory effect to show how this is related to super translations so the memory effect was discovered long ago and uh, so it is a permanent, as I have said, that permanent shift. And it uh, basically creates a non oscillatory part to gravitation over the amplitude. So, this diagram inspired by one of the talks by Mark Favatha can very well describe what is memory. So, if you initially have ring of particles here and gravitational wave is passing orthogonally to the screen. If the gravitational wave doesn't contain memory, then after the passage of the gravitational wave, although there will be some polar, I mean, some changes in this configuration, but after the passage of gravitational wave without memory, there will be no permanent change. But if the gravitational wave carry memory, then there will be a permanent shift like this. The initial and the final configurations will be different. And it has also been proposed in the advanced uh, coming upcoming detectors like the advanced LIGO and LISA. This particular effect can also be detected. Now let me show how this is related to the super translations. So let us suppose there are two detectors st station at the very near to the null infinity, and gravitational wave is passing through. So as we have already seeing the metric can be written in this way at the near vicinity of this then what uh, one can show that if initially there was no uh, czz or the vacuum was denoted by czz equal to zero after the passage of this particular gravitational wave carrying memory there will be a non-zero czz and that can also be related to the shift of the geodesic deviation vector connecting these two detectors. Okay, so let me then briefly describe. So this is the geodesic de deviation equation. This SZ and SZ bar are the components of geodesic deviation vector. Uh, and if one plugs in this particular Riemann tensor component and integrates, one gets this particular expression where this is denoting the shift in the deviation vector. And in the right hand side, there is a term delta of CZZ, which is basically uh, creating this shift to the uh, deviation vector. Now, this delta CZZ can be obtained by solving one of the constraint equation of, uh, or one of the VV or UU component of the Einstein equation. Is, uh, with the shock wave kind of profile uh, or energy momentum tensor. 
and uh, the expression is written down here. Now, one can also, uh, I mean, uh, realize the same effect by considering R super translation, the Lee derivative on of uh, the CZZ with respect to the super translating generator. And one can, uh, I mean, uh, identify that, that this particular super translation, when, act, uh, when it is acting on the CZZ, can generate essentially this wave, this same transformation in CZZ. So that means that a super translation can generate ultimately this memory effect. So now all these stories are well uh, understood in the far region, but whether all these stories can be also realized in the near horizon region of a black hole. Uh, that was one of the questions that motivated us to study the near horizon asymptotic symmetries as well as the memory effect in recent times. Not only that, uh, there are other motivations like whether one can establish some kind of a flat space holography. That means, I mean, whether, whether similar structure can be realized at the horizon or near vicinity of horizon that uh, are being obtained in the far region or at the null infinity. And there are motivations from this Hawking Perry Stollinger proposal that a black hole might have super translation charges, uh, black hole horizon, and those can contribute to this uh, Hawking radiation, et cetera. So there are different ways by which these near horizon super translations have been realized. Let me just uh, briefly talk about all those. So, Carrying out similar type of analysis as done by Bondi and others, the near horizon asymptot uh, asymptotic symmetries were found by people, although this list will be not a complete list, I apologize for that, but these are the prominent, uh, I mean, uh, yes, uh, analysis. Can you hear yes. me? Yeah, I just wanted to alert, sorry for interruption, that you have uh, about five minutes and then we'll go on to question answers. Sure, sure. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, maybe five to eight minutes. Sure, though. yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So the other way, uh, one can also uh, find the asymptotic symmetries like DMS and others uh, by considering the universal structure of a null surface, null, null hypersurface, at, a, at any finite distance from the black hole. So a black hole and null hypersurface can also be described by some equivalence class of null generators and the known affinity parameters. And the symmetries that preserve, and there are some other properties also I am not discussing, the symmetries that preserve the structure, uh, they form the BMS group. And these are some incomplete list of references, uh, which actually take this point of view. And the other point of view is uh, the following, that when we stitch to space-time across a null hypersurface, there are a lot of freedom to stitch uh, along as, uh, uh, the space-times where the stitching can be done uh, in the following way. So you can uh, just uh, perform a super translation-like diffeomorphism change in one side of this uh, space time and then attach the space time with the other side, then what happens that this particular null hypersurface becomes, uh, I mean, history of impulsive gravitational wave. That means the, there, there will be some gravitational wave as well as, uh, as well as some thin matter distribution that will be there. And this uh, thin matter or gravitational wave will contain the super translation parameter, basically. In other words, the, 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 the energy density, surface density, et cetera, will also contain the super translation parameter. So in this uh, particular direction, uh, we had uh, also considered that whether uh, the memory effect can also be realized. So this is, these are some cartoon diagrams that what happens when one considers Schwarzschild uh, shells containing impulsive gravitational wave. 
and uh, extreme Rhizon nostrum shells. So basically, this, this uh, surface is a 2D surface. And let, let us suppose two points on the surface are connected by a deviation vector. This one and two are signifying two time-like geodesics passing through the null surface. So what happens that uh, when this, uh, and one must also remember this null surface contains an impulsive revolution wave in, in the sense that there will be a shockwave kind of profile. So when this particle interacts with that revolutional wave, there will be a permanent shift to their relative position. And uh, there are two different ways they are shifted. So for non-extreme black hole like Schwarzschild, the shift actually takes place in the earlier 2D plane itself. So when the particles were not interacting, let with the gravitational wave, they were in this 2D surface. And after the interaction, they remain in this 2D surface. But for extreme black hole, what happens that they just shift off the surface. So this, uh, these are the two different uh, ways they get uh, deflected. And one can actually compute this uh, deflections via this, this is the one, uh, 2D components of the deviation vector where this gamma AB contains one of the components of this gamma AB, which is the induced metric of the surface, contains the super translation, this capital F parameters and its various derivatives of uh, super translations. So we have also discussed the null geodesics that transversely pass, pass through this kind of impulsive dimensional wave surface, and similar kind of effects can also be uh, shown. So for details, you may look at these two papers. Now, the other way to uh, study the memory effect would be to see that whether, just like the far region memory analysis, whether one can get the near horizon memory analysis. So the near horizon asymptotic metric has been, uh, I mean, realized by many people. And these are the, this is the form of that metric with the following fall off. And uh, carrying out similar kind of analysis, which, what we, I had shown, uh, one can basically get almost an equivalent formula for the shift of the deviation vector related to some of the metric uh, components. This rho parameter is uh, actually specifying that how far you are from your horizon. So this is a small rho expansion of the, of the metric. And uh, one can also show that this particular shift can be realized by a particular form of super translation. Uh, and that basically establishes that the super translation memory effect can also be realized in the near horizon, uh, uh, near horizon region of black hole. So in the coming two, three minutes, let me just uh, uh, describe a very recent work on the possibility of detection of this super translation here uh, via standard GRTs that we have done. So all, all these things, what I have described in the near horizon region, that means that some, some detectors to be placed very near to the vicinity of black hole, which practically is not very uh, easy thing to do. So, can uh, any way one, one detect this uh, super translation, so-called so super translation, uh, by standard GRTs like bending of light or something like that? So for this, what we have uh, done, that we have taken a Vaidya kind of dynamical black hole, and uh, we super translated, we actually implanted super translation here by sending some linearized uh, shock wave to the black hole. So this, this particular configuration was done by hawking perry Stominger for a Schwarzschild black hole. And it was not very difficult to just, uh, I mean, extend that analysis for a Vaidya black hole. So with this Vaidya, uh, super translated Vaidya black hole, what is the, what we are trying to do that if some uh, photon trajectory uh, is being studied very near vicinity of this kind of a black hole, then what happens to the location of the photosphere? It turns out, I mean, uh, we got the inspiration from this kind of a dynamical photosphere from this paper, 
that the photosphere basically deviates from what we know from the bulk black holes photosphere. Okay, so let me just briefly discuss that how this can be shown. So this is the super translated with the black hole, let's say. We have also included some perturbations to this particular metric. And then we also assume that the super translation here, this F stands for the super translation here. This is uh, this only depends on the theta parameter, not both theta and phi. So in this case, when uh, the location of photosphere is plotted in the dynamical situation, taking this to be a mass function, and without those perturbations, then this diagram is showing that there is a deviation from the uh, bulk part. So this dotted line actually signifying a bulk part, and the, the others are drawn uh, by taking various small values of this f of theta. And one can easily see that in the from the early and the late times, in between this early and late time region, there are significant deviations from the uh, photosphere, location of photosphere from the bulk black hole. Similar thing we have also done with those perturbations and similar kind of features are coming in this case also. So this might be a way to see or this might, this might provide a first step to also uh, study the shadow of this kind of a this kind of a configuration like super translated black hole, etc., that might have some consequence in the future uh, detection of this kind of symmetries. So let me conclude that, as I've said, the super translations generate memory effect both in the far as well as in the near horizon of black holes. A super translated dynamical black hole may be detected through the study of its evolving photosphere and it can have useful observational implication in determining shadow and others. I must mention there are other activities related to this vast area of research, like uh, how to accommodate uh, gravitational memory, the waveform catalogs. In recent times, Michael Boyle, Neef Kera, etc., and others have studied this kind of things. BMS like symmetries in cosmology, uh, uh, Bonga and Prabhu has studied recently. There is a spin memory effect, which actually basically related to the angular momentum part of this Bondi metric and uh, are related to the super rotations also. So these are also proposed that can be uh, detected by these people. There are recent efforts to recover BMS group at spatial infinity and as, as well as time like infinity. And uh, uh, in Devodrina's talk, you will probably find out some of the recent developments of realizing this kind of symmetries in near time like infinity. So in total, uh, there is a very intriguing possibility this super translation can be detected in the coming uh, gravitational uh, wave detectors and, and, and in other uh, detection mechanisms through other detection mechanism. So with this note, uh, let me end my talk. And before ending, I, I would like just to uh, uh, acknowledge the funding agencies that are supporting me to do this kind of research, the ACRB of Government of India. Some of the images uh, are borrowed from Shailesh Kumar's thesis, who has just uh, got his PhD degree. And uh, the other collaborators are Shubhadeep, who is doing PhD at Triple IT Allahabad, and Arpan Bhattacharya, who is a faculty at IIT Gandhinagar. So thanks for your patience, and I will be happy to address the questions. Thanks, uh, thanks, Shujit, for the uh, very nice talk. Okay, we will just go on to uh, see if anyone has any questions. Please go ahead, uh, raise your hand, or just unmute and ask. Yeah. Hello, Srijit. Yes. 
Yeah, and Dibu here. So, ah, okay. yeah, just uh, one question because you have mentioned uh, uh, in that figure where in that picture that uh, if gravitation, if this uh, gravitation will carry uh, memory, then it will have permanent effect in, in this displacement and other. So, what do you mean by if gravitational wave carry memory? I, I don't understand this statement. Uh, so the statement actually, uh, when you have uh, collision of a certain variant, like you are colliding supermassive black holes or 10 solar mass black holes, etc., kind of that, then in the waveform of the, those kind of collision phenomena, there will be a linear and nonlinear component of memory, kind of thing. So it depends on the source from where the gravitational waves are generated. So not all type of uh, waves will have such uh, memory. In the okay, system. so if I, if I assume just simple, let's say, quasi normal uh, oscillation of a black hole, so that I mean, uh, so they, they will not carry any memory. No, it no, is uh, it is not a part of quasi normal oscillation. This okay. is something different, different part. Different part. Okay. 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 Thanks. Sir. So, any uh, further question or should we? Amitabh had a question. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Srijit, can you comment on uh, what is the current understanding of uh, uh, relating super translations at infinity and at the horizon? Uh, this is something you mentioned when you discussed this charge conservation. Yeah, I uh, I don't have very complete knowledge about this, but uh, uh, there are efforts uh, not from this uh, memory effect perspective, but uh, there are efforts uh, probably uh, from uh, Strominger's uh, collaborators and others from others uh, to relate this. But I, I mean, I, I, I don't think that this issue has been uh, completely resolved as of yet. So I cannot make a more concrete comment on this uh, except this. OK. Uh, Amitabh, you had any follow up or? No, 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 I'm, I'm good. Okay. I would, uh, Jahanur has a question. Yes, uh, Jahanur, please go ahead. Just... Yeah, so uh, you mentioned that uh, the super translation can be also related with this uh, del U M equation, right? Del Hello? U M equation. Yeah, so, so if you look at uh, that uh, del U M equation. Uh, I probably have not written this uh, equation. Yeah, but uh, I think ah, is, there will be uh, this uh, that part also. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think it is somewhere there in the slide. So uh, I think uh, usually charts are defined uh, on an integral on S two, right? Yeah. So you, usually, when you just integrate that equation, then uh, this uh, memory effect term is a total derivative term, right? Uh, I mean, when, when you just uh, relate uh, in your own, one of your slide, uh, that uh, del UM equation with that, uh, I think here. This this slide, are you talking about? Uh, yes, this slide. Uh -huh. So there is uh, this, uh, this part and uh, this delta CZZ, which can be obtained from the constraint equation by solving Einstein equation can also be obtained by our super translation field in this way. So this was the statement of, about relation between memory effect and super translation. So I am not talking about supercharges. I mean, in this talk at all. Okay, because if you integrate this equation on a S2, then this contribution will be zero, right? This kind of reduction may be zero, yeah. And then how does it physically mean anything to be charged? Uh, no, I mean, there is no relation with any charge in this uh, particular uh -huh. slide. 
Okay, there is so no, uh, no such relation with charge. So this is just a geodesic deviation equation. Yes. And Einstein tensor, Einstein equation. You can uh, solve the Einstein equation with some shock wave profile. And what I am saying that this can also be realized by action of super translation on this particular data. Okay. This I have not said. I mean, this is the standard. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is the standard thing I know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, okay. And the other question is that uh, how and uh, so the super said, translated black hole might have super rotation uh, charge. Are, are you talking about that thing? So a black hole uh, having super translation is not sufficient to generate a super non-zero super translation charge. Are you talking about that? But it will have super rotation charges. So the linear, this part, the configuration that I was talking about, like linearized with the solution, super translation here. So this kind of configuration will have a non-vanishing super rotation charge, but vanishing super translation charge. Okay, and then other super question translation is parameter will be sitting there in the super rotation mm -hmm. charge, anyways. And the other question is the related to the first question, actually. So you said that uh, mm -hmm. that the memory effect can be related to the geodesic deviation equation, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how can you just interpret from the geodesic deviation equation that uh, some waves uh, have memory and some waves doesn't have? I mean, each geodesic deviation equation need not uh, necessarily uh, uh, be the memory no, effect. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. So the thing is and that uh, there is the, there is a comparison between two situations. One is that there is no memory in the gravitational yes. wave. That means that okay. in the far past, the CZZ is zero. Okay. Now uh -huh. there is a burst of gravitational radiation which actually generates a non-zero non CZZ and it passes through this uh, configuration. And then after in the in the far future, you are just studying that what uh, the uh, the shift in the deviation vector relating to uh, detectors. Yes, so that I understand. But uh, can you uh, uh, say anything about uh, that? Say if there is a sinusoidal wave mm -hmm. and it has this, uh, uh, can you? Just look at some wave profile and say that uh, it has super trans it has some memory effect. I mean, if I assume that if I have a sinusoidal wave, then my geodesic deviation vector will again settle to my original configuration, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but, just uh, look at sinusoidal some wave profile. will again generate uh, some uh, non-trivial super translation within a period, right? Yes, but uh, so once the sinusoidal wave is passed, then the detector should be go back to its original configuration, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just looking at the wave profile, can you say that uh, this wave contain no. the memory effect? I am not uh, very Sorry. sure, but it, it should be uh, possible that waveforms that might generate this kind of uh, shift are being studied. Uh, so. Um, I am not sure whether sinusoidal wave will also be uh, accommodated, but uh, I think sinusoidal wave shouldn't carry memory because it so is. It, a uh, yes, I am not sure. Uh, it is. Can I just interrupt for a moment? Uh, uh, so, Janur, since we are already way above time, oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, yeah, maybe we can have a discussion later. Just have one last quick question by Rajiv, who has his hand up. Rajiv, if it's a quick question, please go ahead and ask. Yeah. So, Shriji, this is regarding the very last point you made in the conclusion slides. Uh, um, I presume this effect will be very tiny. Hmm. So you talked about, or at least you commented about detection with the GW observatories. Ah. Is it within the reach of LIGO, advanced LIGO, or not, or uh, even much future? Uh, it is not in the reach of uh, LIGO. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it can be uh, the advanced LIGO sensitivity. Uh, I suppose that a few solar mass black hole, uh, if that is the sensitivity, then at least some part of memory effect can be detected. And uh, for collision of supermassive black hole, uh, the LISA might be useful. 
so so not the present day detectors will be useful to find it this out but advanced ligo and lisa might be useful no what i rather meant is that uh, ligo advanced ligo are not in free fall right you would need an observatory which is in free fall uh, uh to detect memory effect mm -hmm, yes yeah yeah the free fall uh, i mean uh, still i mean uh, you i i don't uh, perhaps you don't need to set the detectors in free fall uh, to carry out the waveforms that will include the memory effect because uh, this uh, these are i mean uh, in the waveforms in the leading order waveforms these are uh, corrections of 2.5 post newtonian order as i remember mm -hmm. and people are actually studying these waveforms uh, in the space uh, sorry arc based detectors also i mean uh this okay. wave forms i don't think it is needed to uh be yeah, associated uh, with uh, I, i i'm not sure okay rajiv we are way off time sure so sure sure fine yeah we, thanks thanks for yeah. so uh let us thank shujit again for the very nice talk uh thank you thank you, thank you shujit